edge into, into crystallizing it. Mm -hmm. But, um, but what, you know, we're, tr we're trying to, the goal for everyone at the time for a sellable product was this tempered sheet of oil that was semi-stable that you could touch depending on, you know, what the material was and stuff like that. And so to achieve that, what we would do is extract it and then you'd, you'd, you'd um, keep, keep reducing it as much as possible until you'd hit like your desired temperature, say, you know, 80, you know, maybe 80 or 90 degrees. So, you know, that Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Jug Dealers podcast. All things cannabis and lifestyle related brought to you by the good people at 5-8 Distributing and when showtime comes, I think, <laughs> I think, I hope we're really shooting for that 420 drop. So I hope that jug dealers.net is up. But I know we've been right stringing it all along yeah, a little bit. Right and, I, and for the record, it's, it's nobody's fault. Uh, <laughs> it, well, it's been ready. <laughs> Honestly, it, it turns out sales tax amongst all 50 states in the United States. Actually, not as easy to string together in a it, weekend as, as uh, we would have thought. Yeah. More complicated than one would think. <laughs> um, and uh, But it, we are very much right there. Um, and as always, I like to do an open call out to, you know, any any uh, commercial and or, you know, home growers out there that are interested in any of the products that you see that we talk about. If you guys are interested in, uh, you know, in samples, uh, please get a hold of us on uh, the Jug Dealers Instagram page or soon, I believe we will have, well, once it's up and running, but we will have a, well, the, a uh, sample dealer, request yeah. based Jug, on the Dealers Jug Dealers .net. .net is actually up and live. It's just you can't purchase products currently, uh -huh. but every other functionality other than purchase, 100% mm. live. So go put your requests for uh, samples, any information, and that'll come right to me, Jaron, and All Gabe, right. and the rest of the crew. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So uh, don't be shy. Get on there, check it out. And very soon you'll be able to shop there too. Hopefully, literally by the time this drops, it'll already be happening. So without further ado, Gabe, why don't you introduce um, our guest today? We've been doing a bit of a series here and I'll let you uh, take it. Yeah, we were actually, we're a little out of, uh, a little out of synchronicity because we've been on the road and stuff, but we have, <laughs> yes, but I'm back. But yeah. And today we have my good friend, Telescopic. Ryan on the show. Um, you know, we're gonna welcome, welcome. We're gonna talk to him today. We're gonna get some history as we love to. We're gonna get some good, good stories. And then before too long, you guys have already heard him on the um panel episode. We're gonna drop some science. So I encourage you guys to stick around and learn something as usual. But with no further ado, telescopic. Welcome to the show, bro. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Gabe. Hell yeah, hell yeah. I'm I'm uh Psyched to have you on. Uh, you know, uh, we were discussing before the show. Um, you're probably one of the youngest, what I would consider legacy growers out there. Um, you know, you, you're freshly 30. Go ahead and dive in, bro. Yeah. So, uh, I guess, uh, my name's Ryan Hubble. I go by Telescopic. Um, I grew up in Western Mass, uh, born in Springfield. Um, grew up like in mostly in, in Westfield, Mass during like middle school and high school. Um, skateboarded, um, you know, skied action sports, um, played hockey and lacrosse too when I was younger, nice. Nice. um, all through high school and stuff. And, uh, um, I don't know, I guess, uh, first, first smoking experience was, uh, <laughs> with my skateboard friends behind mm. behind a dumpster <laughs> with a with a snorkel and pretty, a ten millimeter socket. <laughs> pretty, pretty typical. Yeah. Pretty That's typical. like the Alec Bowl. He's like, yeah. when I speak a snorkel. How, how old? How old were you? Um, I was sixteen. It so was, do you, do you have okay. any siblings? Do you have any brothers? I have a, I have a uh, younger brother. Younger, younger. So, okay. Yeah. So you're, uh, did you like, what kind of parents did you like? Did your parents smoke weed? Was it a rat? Was it like the type of thing? Like, I know my parents smoke so weed. So my dad smoked weed. Um, he was, uh, he wasn't really like, he, he definitely smoked like often and, and always had joints around as I, as I like figured out what it was. And, right. Like, as you think back, back and you're it. like, Oh yeah. Yeah. Putting this like, together a little bit. I, I like, I remember playing with one of those like old school metal, like screw together pipes mm -hmm. that he had left mm. on a desk one time. And Proto so pipe. It, yeah. It was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A, a freshman in high school. And I remember like walking past someone and I was like, <clears throat> Re just put it all together right. like, uh -huh. in context. Boom. Yeah, I was like, "Oh shit, I know what that is." And we all and we all know how like 
yeah. skaters and skiers are. Yeah, so. I mean, not to be stereotypical, oh, no. stereotyping, but yeah. Yeah. yeah, pretty pretty standard, pretty standard action sports kid. Yeah, so, right on, right. I mean, I know Beautiful area too. So, and and I mean, I guess you. I was gonna say, you know, once you put out Massachusetts, and I was like, oh, but you're not a masshole. You're from Western Massachusetts. You're Western Mass. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you if you go, I'll be honest with you. For any of you who don't know, no tell you, if you go no on the offense. if you go on Telescopics page on IG, um, he murders on the skis, bro. Like, have you tell? Yeah, is that so? Is that where you got started? Was in Massachusetts. Was did you? Because like skiing, cause, yeah, or, or, yeah, and doing what you do now. Because yeah. I mean, for anybody who totally. hasn't seen what you do, like you're out there, like hitting the rail, the S rails, the C rails, doing spins on them. Like you're legit. Yeah. You're legit, legit, legit. All I right, see, yeah, all no. right, all right. Like, like hardcore. You. Like busting this. What you said? You did the sixty foot gap the other day. Yeah, yeah. There's this big transfer gap. That's a big gap. They just big built gap. it, Brack. Yeah. Yeah. That's um, a big gap. Yeah. yeah, I've been skiing for 18 years. That was one of my first jobs was um, <coughs> uh, working the terrain park at my local mountain. In uh, Massachusetts. In Massachusetts. Okay, yeah. cool. You guys you guys kind of have something in common. Yeah. You used to drive yeah. the cats, man. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <coughs> I would definitely grow up skiing, love skiing. How old were you um, doing that? I like doing it now. Yeah. Um, I, st- I think I started at like 12. I started working there at 14. Um. You know, like right as soon as I could start working, I started working at the mountain. What was your ma- <laughs> What was your mountain? Um, it was called. It's called Blanford Ski Area. It's actually not open anymore, but um, it's it's produced. <sighs> R.I.P. Blanford. Yeah. R.I.P. It's produced a couple pro snowboarders, like Scotty Stevens. Um, oh, is like dude. Okay, dude. Scott Stevens yeah. is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite yeah. riders. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's a cool little mountain. It definitely like breeds some some creative riding. That's awesome, yeah. dude. That's so awesome. That's dude. That's that's super cool, man. Yeah. That's super cool. So I mean, what? When you first started smoking weed, what kind of what kind of weed were you? Did you end up smoking? Yeah, look. Yeah, I found a little bit of telly here. Oh, we can show. Oh, yeah. I mean, Aye. dude, he shreds, bro. <laughs> like it's, the game Jibbing is real. around. Look at this little. The jibber. game is real. The game is real, dude. Nice. Yeah, I would bust my ass doing this. I can get up and down the slope real nice, like, but not on these rails. Yeah. I'm too old for that shit. I love watching. <laughs> I love watching telly shred. But again, it reminds me, like. Bro, you're 30. Like, yeah. right, you know, you know right. what I mean, dude? Like, I'm 48. You're 30, bro. You know, and it's crazy. So, like, um, you do high school. You know what? You, you what was the first weed you smoked? Do you um, remember? I don't remember. Like, because like the first time I smoked, it was like my other homies had it. Um, but the first weed I bought was definitely some brick weed. <laughs> um, yeah. First, first yeah. weed I tried selling with some brick weed. I, mean, like, <laughs> I was in that like perfect moment in the mid 2000s where it was still like sort of pre-internet days there were scenes but they weren't easy to access and there was still like you know tons of swag around and people would just whatever you get your hands on you'd smoke and you know it was still like basically illegal in massachusetts at that time so i was like really lucky in the fact that i i like got to experience that and see it come you know like come up out of that sure you know even though i didn't have to experience it for very long i, I still you know yeah i guess got i got a piece of that it. yeah you i you got ever, a piece of that you ever get in trouble in that illegal market in massachusetts Did you ever um, have any problems yeah so i started growing like right basically as soon as i like graduated high school i i had been interested in it like as soon as i started smoking junior year I was really interested in like the social dynamic of my friends finding it and getting the plug and all of that. And then, and then realizing it's a plant. Yeah. Oh yeah. You can, you're actually, like, I you can, can actually grow do this. this stuff. <laughs> this man. isn't like cocaine. Yeah. I can yeah. actually yeah. just I can make grow this. this. this yeah. Is cool. <laughs> and, uh, then I like, I found a Remo video in high school, you mm. know, I was like, Oh shit. Okay. Growing and realized it was probably like out of my means at that point. Right. And, uh, you know, and then right at, like after high school, I found Grass City and I found the cabinet growing forums in there. Mm. And I built a Rubbermaid <laughs> container with some CFLs in it. <laughs> put my first plant in the closet on like just before college. And it was like the, the, the laptop I got to go to college was essentially like my gateway into the cannabis industry at that time. Like, right. uh, thank you yeah. for that uh, book yeah. of information that I, you've now opened up to me. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. you know, I, uh, you I, were in the forums. What was your, were you telescopic in the forums? Um, Is that not, where you got your not name? Not right or? away, but I like eventually like, I'd gone through like one or two little names that I didn't really know what to do with. And then I came up with telescopic like Mm -hmm. a year into it or something like that. But Mm -hmm. yeah, I started like grass city, roll it up. And then I started, you know, like sort of just sort of trolling some of the more serious ones and, and really like paying attention to all the old posts and stuff like that. And, 
um, was really, uh, was really more into growing weed than I was in the college at the time I was going to school for cinematography and mm -hmm. ended up spending more time in the library. On in the, Massachusetts, were you going to school? Yeah. Or? Yeah. I got, I had gotten a little bit of a scholarship, um, hook up from the lacrosse coach at, at the school I went to. And I didn't end up playing lacrosse cause I didn't want to practice for eight months and <laughs> play, yeah, play for two months at the yeah. end of the year. Um, so, uh, yeah. I, uh, Ended up, it was in the library spending, spending most of the time on the forums and stuff. Ended mm -hmm. up dropping out of school and to, to basically grow weed. And during that time, um, while I had been growing for maybe a year and a half, started in the cabinet, went, went into, uh, convinced my dad to let me take over a bedroom. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yo, pops. Yep. Hey. Went into a room in the basement. So I guess to say, you know, my dad smoked weed. He was sort of, sort of in the closet about it. Cause he was, uh, did a lot of business in, in the area. And, um, he managed a, a car dealership. And so he kind of kept it on the low. Hey, and, good for him for man. a while. Hey, um, boy. And, and wasn't super cool with me smoking in high school, basically till I got accepted into college. And then it was sort of like, all right. Oh, cool. You know, what are you going to do now? Yeah. yeah. Yep. And, uh, yep. and then quickly, you know, it was, it was growing weed, paying him with jars, you know, to pay, <laughs> pay for the electricity and stuff. Yeah. So, um, An age old story. It's yeah. fantastic, I it. dude. I, I was, it. I was, uh, in sort of a small town of 40,000 people. And, um, I was probably a little bit, a little bit too loud as the young, young buck mm. I was. Mm. And, mm. uh, it happens. Yeah. At, uh, March, 2013, I ended up getting, uh, getting a uh, search warrant served on my parents' house. Ooh. Yeah. I, I actually wasn't home at the time either. So I'd had, I had had three lights in the basement, um, going like it was three lights, 18 plants under those three lights. And then I had like a mother and some clones. Sure. And, uh, I, went, operation. I flew out to big bear, California to go help a friend build a 20 lighter. Um, cause I'm, I, figured, how, I mean, how old are you right now? Figured, I've uh, done it three lighter. Let's do 20. 19. You're like 19. Yeah. That's 19 fucking, years old. Yeah. yeah. And, th and this is all like pe <clears throat> people I'd met through the internet. Like the Facebook groups were really popping off at that time. That was right when like Facebook groups like became pretty powerful just mm. as a social tool. Yeah. I mean, did you have any idea that, that this is like, were you like starting to think to yourself like, this is what I Oh, this is all, this is all I cared about <laughs> like, from when I started college and, and sort of like, I found, I found sub cool. I was watching the CCC 420 guys. And so they were like, sub cool is like my grower culture. The CCC 420 was like smoking culture mm -hmm. and they were putting out great content in like 2011 and, yeah. and just like con consistently putting out. And, and I was in Massachusetts, you know, get buying every high times issue I could watching every YouTube video I could. So like people like sub and that were, were, you know, huge resources for me at the time to figure stuff out and even just find community. Like I, I started finding people in the comments section of sub cools videos. It, it's for me, it's really funny to hear you tell the story because I think about, I was about the same age when I got into it, but we didn't have any of those resources. <laughs> None of those and, tools were and there. You weren't, None of those tools And were you there. weren't like even openly talking about it. And so to hear you tell it from your side and when you say 2011, I'm like, man, like that's when, re that's when medical legalization was happening here. And like, you know, yep. and, and so, so what, what brought you out West? What, uh, what got that, you off the East coast? That, um, that experience. The, the yeah, well, so. <laughs> In fact, it was the, yeah. the, uh, the police. It, it's almost yeah. like that's a very common story around here. I, it's, it sounds super familiar even to myself. That's yeah. I was, uh, so I, I went out to Cali, helped my friend build that 20 lighter. And while I was out there, my dad threw out <laughs> a, a mail that I had in the garage. And I, I guess they were watching me for about eight months at that time. And they made a trash pull that week and they pulled just an entire male pot and all oh, right, right no. out of the trash. Oh. And, uh, and they came, they Bro. came knocking a couple of days later and I wasn't home. I was out in Cali building a 20 lighter skiing, spring skiing in big bear. And, uh, like any good 19 year old. Yeah, totally. And, uh, <laughs> my parents actually didn't tell me what, what, what happened. Like I, I had called them a couple more times like, Oh, how's the plants? Do they look good? Do they look like they need any water. And they're oh. like, Oh yeah, they're all good. And cause they didn't think I'd come home. They're like, Oh, he's living this like little stoner dream right now. Like he, he could just stay in California. And then when I, when I got, were you got, shredding? Like, were uh, you, were no. you like, a, you were riding like you do now, yeah, yeah. but at 19, which means yeah. you were 
probably even. So have you, just out of curiosity, have you sustained injuries? Uh, to, yeah, I've actually, I blew out my knee a I few years later. I see you touching later. your knee. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I blew out my knee a few years later. So this is bear. pre the knee. Yeah. So you're, you're in your yeah, heyday, man. bro. You're, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, yeah. So that was cool. I got back. They picked me up from the airport. It was pretty quiet on the drive home. Yeah. I, yeah. I get home. I, you know, and I'm stoked because I had a great time. I went to the first. You're, all, cup. you're like high, high on life right now. Oh, totally. I went, I went to my first cup. It was the um, first SoCal secret cup was going on while I was right, out there. Right. So I did. I did everything. I built a 20 lighter. I went skiing in this like iconic park and uh one of the best yeah. of the time for yeah sure. one of the best and i went to go like be came able to home to the Ash garden contest. and the only thing left was the pvc frame of the tent oh yeah. no what was i mean what's because i know i've been in some positions like that with my parents what's i mean how does that discussion go with your phone <laughs> is that was like uh hey it's time for you to maybe think about some other things or were you like i gotta get out of here um it honestly, my parents were always like pretty cool with it because I think, you know, they felt some sense of responsibility in the fact that he let it go down, you know, for as long as it, as long as it did, you know, for like almost two years in, in the house. And, uh, um, honestly, like other than, I think we were just focused on like what's next at that point, you know, cause all of all, my whole family's names were on the search warrant. My, my, <clears throat> my seven, you know, like my 16 or 17 year old brother, was, oh, no. you know, he was, he was out front when like they all come pulling up like, I don't know, seven or nine cars deep or something in like a decent neighborhood. Local guys. Yeah. Yeah. Local and, police. And oh, so, wow. They're getting real. Yeah. I got, I got super, that one. I got super lucky with the whole thing. Um, I, uh, the police commissioner in town really like stuck his neck out and, and realized like, yo, this is just some stoner. Like he's not, this isn't an operation. Yeah. This is a, this is a kid growing a little bit of dope. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and he, like, kid who wants some head stash. Yeah. yeah. He, he ended <laughs> up, bless almost, him. he ended up almost yeah. getting in trouble actually. And, um, and I ended up, um, they ended up continuing my case without a finding, which is essentially they put your case on probation for a year. And if you don't get in trouble, they drop the case. Yeah. And yeah. so I paid, I've been there. Um, you know, it was, it was four, <laughs> four months of trying, you know, what's going to happen. I was probably getting, thinking I'm going to end up on probation for three years, which, sure, was, which was what it was in mass at the time. If you're growing weed and, uh, was there medical at the time? I was like a year too early. Right. And, uh, and so I was able to get a medical card, but like as far as growing or anything like that, there wasn't anything in place. Yeah. And so I, I got the card to sh like show the judge that I like wasn't, you know, like was just trying to show some sort of good faith. Right. And, um, and they, 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 I, I was really lucky, you know, I got, I got off with a slap on the wrist and a $460 fine. And uh, I had already had like an ID in That's California. That's walking away, man. Yeah. That's yeah. walking That's... away. Yeah, and they and they let they let me go to California. You know, it was just basically like get the fuck out of here. Yeah, we get don't out of here, kid. Again. So is that is that where you went? Did you go to Cali? Yeah, yeah I was um, I was friends with uh, with this dude um, um, who was running a company, Elephant Extracts, and I went out there and um, helped him kind of develop that. He had a um, delivery service at the time that he was supplying. And then he was selling to other dispensaries and, um, BHO. Uh, yep. Yep. And is, is that what got you into BHO or no, were you already into it previous to that? I, I was already doing it before that. I was like open blasting some small, like stainless steel Turkey basters mm -hmm. before that. Like I, I learned about part of the reason why I wanted to grow was, was to make hash because I was making hash from like just ace that I was buying and my friends that would pick up, like pick up a decent amount of weight for, for being kids, I'd, I'd convince them to stash away an eighth or a quarter so we could blast it and make hash for ourselves. <laughs> so I guess, I guess you're, I guess you're young enough that this is a good question. I, I didn't have it in my things, but you know, for me, the, the most hash that Jenner and I had seen the for first hash would be like the Moroccan, the Turkish, yeah. any of those traditional hash hash, you know? But for you, what's, what's the first, what's your first hash experience, man? Cause I, I usually ask people their first flower experience, but yeah, what's your first hash experience? I think it was, there was, uh, there was a dude in our town that had, had a really good California connection, um, as like a, as like a high schooler. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I 
From what I remember, it was it was pretty dark, but it was probably bubble hash from from NorCal or something, some some pucked up bubble hash, something like that. Um, and I had only seen it like once, and there wasn't that much, you know. It was like bold topper, pretty dry, you know, not right, right, not, right, not, right, right. Not, almost almost could almost be like it. you know press key half ass, or yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. When I remember, I remember hearing about you know, and but it was very much uh, something you read about in high times is hash oil, right? And I remember like, but the, I had no concept, and this was you know, of course, like you know, let's say two thousand, you know, ninety nine, two thousand, two thousand one, like this, you know somewhat of a knowledge that it existed. Didn't know how to really consume it. You know, assume you just brushed it on a joint or something like that. Really didn't know anything else and had no idea about process, chemistry of it. Yeah, that's something with me is I just, I don't think I ever had any idea on that because I saw Bud Oil in 1993. But I had no well, even after having had, Adam on realizing I, yeah. there was a market for I had no idea how these, it was these oils and, you know. Yeah. Right. Um, so, how, how, distilled, you know? so how so how yeah, like how do you, you start getting into open blasting? You're probably doing it in the Pyrex with the double boiler of that, you know, yeah, same that way that like, most of us did. <laughs> just, Circa 2011 just, or so. Yeah, just before I started growing, essentially, it was like, that's when I was watching, and like watching some of the subcool stuff, watching a lot of CCC 420, and they were, they were like living in the Bay and they had, you know, access to all sorts of hash. So I was learning about, bubble hash and BHO and ISO hash and the differences between it all. And they'd have an episode like every couple of weeks with like a glass review, a hash review and a flower review. And so I, I was able to pull like pick up a decent amount from that and mm. the, and the forums too. Like I, I came up at a time where um, in, in like 2010, 11 it was, uh, was basically when butane hash making on the forums was really getting serious. There was dudes who, were sort of respected with their technique. Um, some names like NorCal Oil Man was one of them, um, who had like a, a, a technique where he could get reasonably stable stuff most of the time and and feel like he was clean. And, and he had like a, you know, a purge SOP that he he put out very mm -hmm. early on for people. There's and no de-waxing. There's no. No, yeah, we're, we're stuff early stuff that. This, this Yeah, is, this is still just open blasting. and just trying to get the butane out. Yeah, people figure, <laughs> yeah, figuring really out pur purging and stuff like that. And, you know, like what sort of consistencies is it, you know, not even realizing that, hey, like we might actually like the crystallization. You know, we were still like avoiding stuff like that. At, right, at right, 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 right. But yeah, I, I think I think maybe the, fir the first hash I had made was probably with some ISO. I think just to like just to see if I could get a return and smoke it and see what it was like. And then just, you know, some Turkey basters and then ended up in California. And, um, the, um, my homie out there had the early, uh, sub zero extractors that were mm -hmm. open blasting. They were open blasting tubes that were big stainless steel tubes that had dry ice sleeves and they were huge. And we were blasting tons of cans into open pyrex. Oh in, man! Into open pyrex boxes pans. and boxes. How many? Pans. How many can? Because I remember when I did some of the bigger ones, like you'd need to run like three cans just to get the thing to start up to oh, pressure dude, flow. I don't even remember. I mean, the, one, the ones we were using, they were like they were like this tall. And, That's uh, hilarious. Yeah. Just can after you're can. buying the master cases, yeah. master buy cases the master the case. And, yeah, and so can I get the master master case. Yeah. No, totally. It was it was interesting figuring out how to dispose of all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could, you're like it's, it's a lot of trash. It's yeah. so it's so funny to think about like that. That like you know um, how far the industry has come in that amount of time. And that's why, you know, again, that's why I call you one of the legacy guys. Cause you were there running <laughs> cans of tain yeah, through yeah. like open and Just you were easy with that motion, Gabe. You're, hey, you're, hey, you're, hey, you were there, buddy. <laughs> um, you know, um, I'm not but, even, but the, uh, I was just saying, but the, uh, memes exist know, on the internet, my friend exists. <laughs> um, and coming in, you know, sure with being that? like, Hey, we need to dry ice this. We need to do this. We need to, do, you know, constantly evolving, constantly going to the guys who are making these units and saying, Maybe if we did this, we could get this result. So I mean, to see to see that evolution, it's it's wild. So I mean, how long were you in Cali? When did you decide to make the move here? Um, so I was in Cali for a little bit over a year. Um, there we, um, I, when I went out there, we were open blasting, and he, my the um, 
my friend that I was living with, um, par- partner in some, some of the businesses, basically, uh, he had a Timizium and knew this dude, Mad Dabber, who was making basically oversized Timiziums at, at the time. And they were doing all, they were running around d- extracting whatever they can get their hands on for a little bit. Um, <laughs> and then, um, uh, Ari my, uh, had had the extractors and I realized like, hey, I think these are actually more ideal than the open tube in theory. Like we should we should explore this and start trying to start like getting like really good hash out of this because it was, you know, we were at the time where it, um, closed loop extractors were a thing. Um, you had you had uh, Giddy Up was was making the OB doses and stuff mm-hmm. and they were out there. Not a lot of people had them. And not a lot of people were running good material through them. And I, I had like the harebrained idea being the young kid with still like some science chemistry classes in my head realized, Hey, I think, I think the, the close loop extractor is def is a more ideal. Like we, we can, we can control the variables more in this thing. We can push and pull and get it through faster, run more butane. Like we, we can get a cleaner extraction with this thing. Let's try it. And so we did some Timizium runs and we did some Mad Dabber runs. And, um, it turned out that Mad Dabber, um, was going through some personal issues and he was selling extractors at the time and his uncle was making them. And, um, we basically ended up taking over, taking over like his business kind of and selling the extractors and working with his uncle. And that's when we were, I, I was able to start having some, some say over like what I think we needed for like design wise and just to sort of meet these like theoretical, like minimums to, to have like a good functioning extractor. And so, and so our listeners kind of understand, you know, you know, Gideon Bill kind of went through the process to develop the idea behind the closed loop extraction and develop that behind live resin. But then there were a bunch of you other dudes who kind of came in and there weren't many, like you said, there weren't many options. Well, and this was even before, this is even, you know, a few years before live resin. Cause we're still like, this is 20, 2013. Mm-hmm. And we were, we had, when I was in Cali and we were living there, we started entering secret cups. Um, Cause we were working with MTG seeds a lot. So we entered their material in the secret cups that um, Daniel Desai was running. Mm-hmm. And uh, we, we were really like, we were the only people entering closed loop oil at the time. Um, and it back then, like people, high end hash makers were afraid to run a closed loop machine because they thought they'd ruin the material. It just, what, it just wasn't frozen material yet. Yeah, it was. It was, okay. it was dry I, material. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, I feel like a lot. And of- that's the big difference between live resin. It's not that people weren't running closed loop material; they just weren't running frozen material. Yes. Yeah, like, gotcha. Like- I, I don't know that. I'll be honest with you. I don't even know that I ever realized that. Yeah. Like for, you know, there was, there was a couple of years there where OB doses were around from, I don't know, 2011 or 2012 and on, but it wasn't until, you know, like a few years later until Bill does those runs. Um, there, there was a, there was even like the first couple of two years, people were really afraid to put good material in those machines. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I remember clean, it, being was, a, it was a cleanup. It was a cleanup. Yeah. That was, it was a cheat almost. Yeah. You know, that was like kind of the cheat code it was almost the, you know, knock on CRC, but it's almost like the, the current. Well, we're going to, we're going to get know. to CRC. We're gonna, <laughs> yeah, I was wondering, yeah. is this, it, would that be the shatter era when shatter was like the, um, the, I, everyone was trying to yeah, get away yeah. from wax so, into yeah, shatters. Slabs and shatter. Yeah. Don't yeah. shatter. It don't matter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember the, you just get pizza boxes oh. full of slabs. Yes. <laughs> well, and that's, I guess that's when, that's when you, when everyone, I guess as a collective kind of developed putting it in the oven as part of the process. Am I, am I right? Um, in that yeah, that respect? was, hap- that was, I would say that happened around 2012, like mm-hmm. 2012 was probably the year of the oven for butane hash. <laughs> the um, year of the, year of the, year of the yeah. oven. <laughs> um, like 2012, because like, you know, by the time I had already gone out to California in, in early 2013, like the, there were people, you know, people that had ovens, my partner had an oven in, in the garage and stuff. And so it wasn't, yeah, 2012 was when like across international ovens hit, sort of hit the California market. So let me ask a question for you. Cause it's, oh, I love one of the reasons I love having you on is cause I know you can drop some science. Um, what for our listeners, what is the point of going in the oven 
And then what kind of temperatures are we achieving in there? And what, like what's happening? So at the time when shatters the thing, your goal is to, is to take, um, you know, your solution of butane and hash that's been reduced and you want to, you want to try to base, temper it as fast as possible into this as fast as possible with the least amount of agitation. And we find out later you want to, you want to minimize heat over time. Cause that's going to, that's going to end up pushing you over the edge into, into crystallizing it. Mm-hmm. But, um, but what, you know, we're trying, we're trying to, the goal for everyone at the time for a sellable product was this tempered sheet of oil that was semi-stable that you could touch depending on, you know, what the material was and stuff like that. And so to achieve that, um, what we would do, you know, we, what we would do is extract it and then you'd, 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 um, keep, keep reducing it as much as possible until you'd hit like your desired temperature, say, you know, 80, you know, maybe 80 or 90 degrees. So you know that you've gotten a decent amount of butane out of the pan after you've poured it off. And then you're, you want to purge it down as fast as possible. So you, you're essentially, it's, it's like making hard candy versus like, you know, um, whipping it into taffy, uh, or, or crystallizing it in a rock candy, you know, it's very similar to these candy making processes. So, so we're really just trying to get this sheet that we can get into this, like one sort of crystalline sort of mass, like semi-crystalline mass that is stable and, uh, through heat and vacuum purging is, is how we were getting there then. Um, and it, it turns out you really only needed, you really only need vacuum if, if the oil can move a little bit and, and it's really about surface area, surface area, surface area, yeah, area and vacuum. Gonna... Um, but at the time people, people were, um, stacking, you know, pretty thick patties and stuff of oil, pouring out like a lot into a, into a pan and then trying to, trying to essentially purge it as this like bubbling puddle of oil, thinking that you, you just, you're going to pull the butane out of it. And that was pretty common, um, pretty much all around. Everyone's like, Oh, we're going to degas it. Like someone's degassing their resin pour, you know, they're just going to, you know, pulling the bubbles out. What temperature does butane evaporate at for our listeners? It's like, uh, 30 or 32, somewhere like somewhere around there, 31 to 32 degrees. Um, so it's not very hard to evaporate, Mm. but when you're trying to temper a sheet of, of like THC and, and terpenes like that, the stiffer it is, the more surface tension it has, the harder it is to really pull the bubbles out. Mm-hmm. And that's when you have to just try to maximize surface area and, and it, you know, expose as much surface area as you can. And it, and it turns out even when the hash is sort of sappy, it still has a significant enough amount of surface tension that you need some sort of agitation or nucleation or something that that is able to, to get the butane out, but you don't necessarily temp temp just temperature isn't necessarily going to break that surface tension. Um, but, but at the time, uh, you know, ovens were the thing everyone was, everyone was trying to temper, temper sheets of shatter and, uh, and ovens is what you needed. And they're still very useful. Like if, you know, you still use it to like I'm holding stuff, but, um, you know, I, I'd say back then people were probably closer to a hundred degrees and I'd say now, um, most people, I, 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 I'd hope most people are closer to room temperature when they're purging. Hmm. Um, how did you land at Incredibles? Um, when I was in California and we were designing extractors, Derek Cummings, who was running Pink House Labs at the time, and had a connection. Pink House, yeah, yep. and he had a connection at Incredibles. Yeah, Derek's one of the OGs. Yeah, he's wow. D money yeah. man. Um, he Incredibles was making his edible recipes. And they were running through all sorts of, you know, milligrams and, and needed oil. And Derek was also foreseeing that, it, you know, it was 2013 and he was foreseeing legislation coming in 2014. And he knew he needed to find a close. As far as rack legalization? Um, um, kind of like more uh, lab lab regulation coming. Ah, gotcha. Because uh-huh. uh, it was early, or, um, summer 2014 is when closed loop extractors and class one division one spaces mm-hmm. were, were, were mandated in Colorado. And Derek knew that was coming. And he also knew that he wanted an extractor that he, that performed with like, with the, t- you know, the variables that he knew he wanted to make good hash. And, um, he got introduced to Ari and I out in California and we, uh, we, 
um, had a couple of meetings. We had a meeting with him in California and then we came out to Colorado for the secret cup finals in December, 2013 and brought an extractor and did a couple demos at like, uh, we did a demo for Bo Johnson at river rock. And then we did a demo, um, at, uh, pink house and we did a demo at incredibles mm. and, mm. um, I think incredibles auto machine. And I don't know if any, anybody else did, but, uh, um, yeah, shit. I kind of forgot where where I was going. <laughs> no, that that's great. Well, you're just getting with Incredibles and kind of, oh, yeah. you know, your movement. Yeah, you know, obviously so, from from California to so, Colorado. Yeah, and- they they bought one of the early extractors, and then uh, a couple months later, they ended up making an investment into the extractor company, which was Sweetleaf at the time, mm-hmm. and they funded um, the manufacturing of twenty extractors. And then we came out for the 2014 High Times Cup. And we were at their booth and we displayed the extractor. They make a beautiful machine. I know, I know, as I remember, I think what Soda Pop did, the uh, welding and stuff. Yeah, that was, yeah, back in the day. And bro. He's a G when it comes to welding, dude. You know, I still follow that guy just because he's a a nice beat. eh? But they, I mean, you know, they really started making those machines. That's one thing I always liked about the Incredibles machines. Is they're pretty to look at, man. Yeah, you got that beautiful shiny stainless yeah, on it was, them. It was still like Sweet Leaf at that time, and um, I think it was around in in May of 2014. Is basically when I moved. Um, they I knew Incredibles needed an extractor. They had they had invested into the extractor company in California that we were running, and we had kind of stopped. We had stopped running hash as much in California. And so I was Peabod there yet? No, no, this is, this is, um, they were still just a kitchen. It was just a kitchen and a Mm -hmm. lab. Um, and, uh, I called them up and I was like, Hey, do you still need someone to run that machine? Mm -hmm. Cause it's gotten a little slow here. And it's basically, you know, it's just, it's just this, you know, the startup extractor company. Mm -hmm. And so I went out to Colorado two weeks before I turned 21 and, uh, bro, that's insane. (laughs) It's like, when you, yeah, that's crazy. I mean, that is really, you probably had to wait two weeks to get your badge. Yeah, I, yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure. Yeah. 100%. Absolutely. Yeah, I, was, I think you had, yeah. I was thinking the same thing. That's like, crazy. Derek had an office at what would end up, what would become the grow, but it wasn't built out yet. So it wasn't there, like, you know, wasn't any plants or anything there. So we were just hanging out there smoking weed for the first two weeks until I, until oh, I could go get is, my badge. But yeah. Wow. <laughs> that yeah, is, I mean, yeah. And then you moved here. Um, you know, and at the time, I think the first time we met was through ADSI, you know, like so many guests we end up having on the show, you know, uh, ADSI and the exposure you got through that to some of the people, again, Peabud, uh, JJ, you know, Josh D just so many people. I mean, you were, you were in it as a kid, right? Exposed yeah. to everything. So, I mean, where do you, uh, you know, uh, did you ever win any awards with Incredibles? Yeah. Yeah. So we, um, we, we, we want, we want a bunch there. I mean, tons of edible, you know, tons of edible awards and, and I'm also, you know, really proud about making the edible oil that went into that too. You know, there was a ton of oil, ton of production that was really streamlined there. Um, and, uh, and, and some of that edible oil also really helped, uh, helped some patients. But, um, uh, so there was, uh, there's ton, tons of edible awards that, that happened, but, um, some of the ones that I had like really direct involvement where um, we took a second place uh, in a high times concentrate. I forget like which hybrid indica or sativa it was, but um, it was an OG mix that we did with pink house. They sent us like a trash bag of a bunch of fresh frozen mm-hmm. OGs. And this was early. It was one of the first fresh frozen runs I had I, I ever done. Like I think we had done one or two test runs of some material at Incredibles and then pink house sent us some stuff. That was um, a mixed bag of OGs, and um, we had to sift through. We had to sift through all of them, and sort of. Ma- we think we made two or three different mixes, mm-hmm. and uh, the mix we chose to enter was uh, we called it Space Valley OG. I forget. I forget which OGs were in it, um, but uh, we ended up taking a second place for that, nice. which uh, you know, which I was stoked with because it was like you know a blend that we came up with. Did you know an early fresh frozen run? So Very was, cool. Yeah, I was stoked with that, and then. Uh, I think that was 2015. And then the next year, um, we won with, uh, we won the, um, hybrid, 
uh, category with our orange soda concentrate. And that was something we, that's had, one you guys are famous for. Yeah. That's, and that's, yeah, th that's something we, we had done the selection, selection and breeding in house. And, uh, you know, ba basically like did, it, you know, bred it, grew it, extracted it, did it all. Bro. One of the reasons I had you guys in the Clementine challenge was because of how well you did with that you know, in the previous year. And I think we both, we both placed that year. I think I, that's the year I got second place with kind. Yeah. Bit. That was the year. That was the, that was the year when they didn't have 2016. They didn't have like the expo, but they had the awards at the Ogden. Yeah. At the Ogden, uh, Bronson played Bronson played yeah. and parliament played. Yep. That's why I remember <laughs> I was there all by myself and they announced this is the winners. And I screamed. I'm like, yeah. And the chick next to me, she's like, what are you excited about? I was like, oh. I just got second place in the cannabis cup. Good, uh, uh, I I that was a great night. Uh, I freaked out. Oh yeah. That was dude. You and you guys deserved it. So, uh, what, I think I know. I think I know. But what is your favorite genetic that you guys extracted at Incredibles? The sour bandry. I knew that's what you were going to say. I knew that's what you were going to say. That, that's something that we got. <laughs> we got through. Um, we got through uh, a good friend in California um, was really connected to like IC Collective and a lot of the early sour fam that that made it to Northern California. Um, and so that was, that's some, something that, uh, we only, I think we only popped five beans and found a really strong pheno. Wow. Strong. Yeah. It's strong. Really I've really smoked strong. it and many it, different ways from you. It's, it's such great. an amazing plant too. It's, um, it's really resistant. I've seen it in enough commercial gardens to see what it's resistant to. And like, it can be touching PM and it's not going to grow mm -hmm. on it. I gotta love that. Yeah. You gotta um, love that. I've grown it outside mm -hmm. a couple of times and it's like the, the bugs really don't like it. And it finishes in 50 days if you're on top of the metabolism. So mm -hmm. wow, yeah. wow, wow! That checks that checks some real it, boxes. It, it checks a lot of boxes, and yeah. it's like it's not like I wouldn't say it it like goes over the top on any of them, but it's so solid all the way around that it's it's one of my favorite plants. Excellent, excellent. Um, so what? I mean, you've been in it a long time, and you've been in it since its inception. You know, when and what do you think? is the downfall of BHO. Like, what do you, what do you think happened? Why do you think, you know, it's kind of in the backseat nowadays to rosin and, you know, what do you think contributed to that? Um, I like that question, by the way, because yeah. I, you know, I think, and then, and then I, as a two part to that, then I want, I, you know, I want to get your opinion on why it's something you find that's still viable and why it's still something that you, whether you think it's cleaner or better, or whatever, I'll leave that kind of up to you, but kind of as a two part question. So yeah, part one, go ahead. Um, the downfall of BHO, I, I, it's hard for me to really think like when it really started. Cause I mean, I think basically the whole time since, you know, May 2012, when it was really starting to pop off, rig, mm -hmm. rigs are becoming a thing, you know, more, it's more right. ubiquitous. Um, even then, you know, like there's been like sort of crappy black hash uh, mm. all over the place. So I think, you know, it maybe takes a couple of years for the market to stabilize there and figure out how much good hash is worth, you know, good BHO is worth. Right. Um, and then. I mean, I, CRC definitely kind of contributed because then yeah. all of a sudden you were able to take that black I, ash I, yeah, I think and it's make it white. I think, it, <laughs> it, I think it, the downfall might be a little bit before then, you know, like I'm almost thinking it's like it's like sort of tied in with distillate and the fact that, you know, uh, it's, I tend to agree with you. It, I, it's I, around the time that people are figuring out we can recycle more than we thought we could with a little bit, with just a little bit of technique. And that's when, you know, like, you know, people see, people see dollar signs and stuff. You know, well, and I think, I think because it ended up being a very approachable, I mean, again, we were open blasting. We were doing, you know what I mean? We were backyard blasting, you know what I mean? Doing some of that stuff. So in a way it was very approachable, which then in some ways, I think in people's mind made that feel like it was less refined later, even though it was getting way much more, more refined. refined yeah. Right. Yeah. And, 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 and so I, 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 I personally think it got a little bit of a bad name early on because it was this fixing technique. Yeah. Right. And I also think there was a lot of people that were just flat out 
blasting bad hash because they're putting bad material. We talk about this all the time, whether it's nutrients or whether it's what you're feeding your, your cow, you know, it's fire and fire out, you know? And I think you, you talked early on, uh, yeah, you know, about people not, being yeah. so afraid to process good material. Yeah. yeah right? it, went, it went from being right. Cause in live resin times, like when, you know, they first started doing live resin, places like green dot crx you guys where you were taking that primo material and it wasn't a cleanup but then all but of a sudden there a started while. being so much material and the fact that people were like oh yeah you can use bho to clean it up too oh, well <laughs> I, i'd actually yeah. it it might be around the time when propane comes out because that's when you start seeing people actively like like openly saying i'm doing this for color mm -hmm. and so that's when maybe mm. that that sort of mentality gets a little bit more pervasive with operators is around the time when they're like oh we can do something to this to make it sell more it's not just what it is right can right you, right right can you because i know so first off i guess have you have you used any of the other gases like hexane pentane any of that stuff and can you maybe explain to our listener what what's the advantage of using butane by itself versus in your opinion cuz i know we've had other people on here who use blends but what what are like what are the positives and negatives i guess why is and, and not for nothing why is butane such an awesome way to extract um well it's it's really advantageous in the fact that what it likes to dissolve happens to be a spectrum of molecules that we also really like to capture. <laughs> Light hydrocarbons. Yeah. And so it's, you know, it, 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 from, you know, the, on the heavier, you know, on the heavier side, you've got maybe some, some of the waxes from, from the trichome head, the cannabinoids, and then, you know, like heavier terpenes all the way up to lighter terpenes. And we are, it just happens to be sort of right in that window of like it, it wants to dissolve, you know, like this sort of size and weight of these, you know, non, nonpolar things. And, uh, um, it, uh, with a little bit of mini, and then we found with a little bit of man manipulation, we can kind of, you know, like cut the bot, bring the bottom up of that a little bit and cut a little bit of the fat off the bottom mm -hmm. and, 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 um, you know, and then through CRC, people figure out they can, Ooh, I can do a little bit of filtration in the middle of the spectrum here and stuff. And maybe they over filter a lot, but, um, that, that's still interesting technology. Yeah. Sure. yeah. And so, you know, it's just, it just butane just happens to line up and, you know, the, the fact that it's a hydrocarbon and we've, you know, we got other things that are close to hydrocarbons. It's, it's advantageous for and us. Terpenes are hydrocarbons. Yeah. Light hydrocarbons. Like, uh, like, uh, they uh, like uh, light hydrocarbons. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's boiling. They play nice together. It's yeah, boiling yeah. point is, is advantageous. And the fact that it's, it's a pretty low boiling point so we can, we can collect all this stuff and then can reasonably preserve it afterwards when we're trying to get, you know, when we're getting rid of the solvent. So let's talk about that because well, and that's, a lot, yeah. Uh, well, a lot of people get into you know we one of the things that I constantly harp on is the word cleaner, you know, I, and, and that's so, what I was going to get into a yeah. little bit too, just because. And again, the word solvent, right? Yeah, I mean, heck, uh, uh, water's a solvent, right? Yeah. So it's like people look at what you know these solvents, it, you know, terpenes are solvents. You know what I mean? There's like they a are. solvent is a you know that, that's a pretty pretty general term, but I think it has a bit of a negative connotation and I don't think there's any reason for it. I just think it's happened. Right. And then I also think that people have this idea, you know, especially even when you talk about organic versus non-organic. And the only reason I bring that up because Butane's at a very, at, at, well, <laughs> at a very base, at a very base meaning it's, it's carbon based or not carbon based. Right. But people don't think of it like that. And that's the only reason I bring that up. It's just because of the way it's not a bad people, argument. It's just the way that people think it's like, Oh, well, it's organic. It's good. Well, not necessarily. Right. Um, and then I also think that with, you know, with, with taking bubble hash and then pressing it and doing the rosin thing, people think, and this is kind of my segue into that, that it's cleaner, right. Yeah, yeah. Which, which, I'm not saying it is or it isn't, and I, but I think that's where the. I the just argument want you to lies. pick a different adjective. That's all I ever yeah. say to anyone. Just sure. use different adjectives. Because what is clean? I think that's that's what becomes a little bit of a loaded statement there. But anyway, go on. Yeah. Um, so butane is a thing. I think people you hear solvent and so like a solvent like hexane. You do not, you know, like he hexane can can cause some like damage. You like you don't want to be breathing hexane. You you won't. Um, Pentane's a little bit, a little bit safer, 
Um, and we like, we'll use pentane to do recrystallizations and stuff like that, but you still, you like, you want to be using pentane in a, in a hood, um, partially cause it's flammable, but also cause you don't, you don't want to be breathing it. But when you, when you're getting to things like, like propane and butane, butane is actually very, very low toxicity to humans. Um, if just very low toxicity I guess, to mammals in general, um, it's not, and it's not a carcinogen, which I think is like. A, a lot of things people just sort of hear this and they think, "Ooh, boiling chemical bat," you know. Like, exactly, and that was kind of my point. It's got to right? be, ah! yeah, it's got to be harsh. But like, yeah. if you look it up, like, yeah, but butane. Th there's really like not enough evidence. It's not like the type of chemical that could really like cause cancers. It, it'll kind of collect in fatty tissue for a little bit, but but most of that and most of the health data you see is from um a, is from abuse. And, and abuse cases because they're trying to learn about about that because it's the second most abused inhalant in the world. Behind that, so that's people just huffing. Yeah, huffing yeah, it. straight off the can. And wow. so, so I huh. think wow. one of the reasons why people Yikes. have no. they, they oh. people don't. I didn't. Re I, I'll be honest with you. I, you're teaching me some stuff. <laughs> yeah. Learn something new every day. I didn't day, realize so. that people. I like. I know. It's Thought it was funny. just the dust. I well, I walk behind. <laughs> I walk behind <laughs> my local. Clean, don't exist anymore, bro. I walk. By, <laughs> I walk behind my local Home Depot and I see dust off cans back there. So I know <laughs> what's yep. going yeah. on there. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Butane's probably too expensive for those guys. Yeah. Behind nitrous, it's the it's the second most abused because it's just it's in a bunch of things they can get their hands on it. Yeah, so makes sense. There's I mean, a, there's a lot of data. I didn't think about on, that. I did not know that on very very high levels of ingestion for abuse and everyone takes that and tries to extrapolate it down into smoking butane hash and there's just no there's zero no correlation yeah, yeah. well and not to mention you know bill's always keen to point it out to me but there are certain terpenes that above like 380 degrees convert to like aldehydes and benzene and stuff like that so i mean in which that goes back to the discussion of terpenes or hydrocarbons. Yeah. So, I mean, and I think, you know, the one thing I'm pretty keen to point out to people and have been for at least the last couple of years is a lot of it's about temperature of ingestion. You know, you don't want to be, when we first started, you know, it was glowies, glowies for Kobe. Glowies for Kobe yeah. You know what I mean? We're, we're, we're out here. We're like, if it ain't glowing, I ain't going. Well, it's funny that you guys say that because I was thinking about one of my own personal crackpot theories about how BHO started to get maligned is that I found that, that rosin was coming out right as low temp was becoming popular. Right. So I think right. a lot of right. people of a certain age have memories of BHO equal glowies equal bad. Oh, yeah. yeah. Equal, yeah. equal lung lock. Oh. Equal rolling around on a kitchen floor <laughs> thinking and you were dying. And then thinking because you were so oxygen deprived, you were higher. <laughs> you were yeah, actually just which is probably like true because, because you couldn't marry you're like you had about a thimble full of lung capacity dude I'm, i mean i've definitely known some people Shit. who've like collapsed a lung you know but i think a lot of that came yeah doing hot dabs wow yeah and uh the, the more honestly the more i've i've dug into science and like really tried to be a good scientist it's it's really hard to take <clears throat> take something that happened to your homie that you don't know like you don't know what his genetics are. Or Maybe what, they smoked know. as a kid, well, or just even other things. Getting hit and like getting hit in the chest. I've I've talked to a few doctors about this, and they're like, "Man, that's really not like." I'm worried about so many other things with your lungs than you sticking them together. He, he like you sort of get laughed at by by any real physician if you tell him like, "Oh, my lungs stick together because there there wasn't enough hash, and I know someone that died because of that." And they're like, "That's that's just that's a <laughs> that's myth. absurd." Yeah. That's um, absurd. So, um, I, you know, I'm sure, you know, like going through some respiratory events, you know, like some people are, are prone to it. And yeah. That's, pretty, that's predisposed thing. to yeah. it. And things I mean, like either that, way yeah. you're, you know, like I say to folks all the time, you're still smoking something. Yeah. You're still, even if it's totally. a okay, vapor, kids. you're still. Yeah. Okay, kids. Smoking is bad. <laughs> Let's just get that. Is, yeah. We'll get that out of the way. Okay. None of us yeah. on here yeah. are going to tell you that smoking is just no. okay. No. I, no. I had better. <laughs> My preferred method of delivery, but. I, I had better saying. lungs on the ice when bef before I took dabs. That's right. All right. right. Said it here, folks. Still, it here. Also, They're do not don't hold in dabs the way you hold in smoke. <laughs> it's not smoke. It's vaporized oil. As it starts to cool in your lungs, starts to condense on the walls. In and out, baby. Don't. Hey, no. I know dudes that hold them in like thirty seconds. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. No. Don't blow out your dabs. <laughs> yeah. out All right, dabs. folks. Blow out your dabs. Well, I do. Uh, I do very much appreciate you coming out, and I think that this has been. I mean, it's it's definitely been. And 
actually this whole series I've I've actually really enjoyed. I know I haven't been able to take part in all of it. We only have a studio that's so big and it was best to get everybody in on that one. So Gabe, I appreciate you moderating the, aiding that and putting this together. And, you know, again, I, I hope this was as interesting to everybody else as it was to me. And I, and I do love the tie in and, and hearing the science because even my, myself, like I'll be honest, I'll be real honest. I am an equal opportunity consumer. And what I mean by that is, well, I mean, if it's clean, whatever, you know, well put together, whether it's edibles, um, um, rosin, BHO, you know, I'm, I'm down to smoke it. Well, and so, you, I mean, <laughs> dude, you've, you know, you got a lot of knowledge and experience when it comes to the plant side. Right, right, but right. But as right. far as this side, you know, this and side, a lot no. of it's exposure. Yeah. You know, a lot yeah. of it's exposure. And I didn't have that early exposure. I mean, my more of my early exposure in my, my you know, early uh, um, interest did lie in the plant, you know, and, 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 and laid and still does in the horticultural side of things but again it takes all types yeah you know? and it so, takes good flower well and to that's make good hash. that's yeah that's and, and and for me i think that's that's when kind of the aha moment whether it was you know live resin or bho or rosin or whatever it's that realization like oh shit you can't cheat this you know what I mean? There's certain things you can't cheat in life. You can't cheat distance. You can't cheat time. You can't cheat calories. Well, you can't cheat good hash. Either. Yeah, you can't cheat good weed. Like, good and, and you know what I mean? And, and to get good hash, you have to have good weed. And to get good weed, you have to have good grower. In fact, that's a little bit of a segue into what we're going to have. We're going to talk about on a uh, episode, maybe the next one, but yeah, next very episode one, is going to be very one period. coming up. Uh, we're going to talk about, you know, really what we do believe it takes to have that high quality cannabis production so that we can also, if we so choose to make high Thank quality you. hash. Thank you guys so much for coming out. Thank you all for listening. Um, why don't you give your, your kind of uh, contacts real quick. If anybody wants to reach out and ask some more specific questions to our boy, Telly, where, where can they find you at? Uh, so I'm uh, at telescopic on Instagram. Um, you can find me on Facebook or LinkedIn under my name, Ryan Hubble. Ooh, look at that. Um, Ooh. Uh, yeah, sort of to do some private work right now. So I'm, I'm open um, if you need some help with your labs, some consultation or anything, um, any opportunities in Colorado. Well, it sounds like from from what I've heard at the show, there's there's not a lot of people that have as much experience in, in you know, as uh, as you do in the lab situation and building out and doing close loop stuff. So thank you for not taking as the young, time. not as young. Not, not, yeah, that's for damn not. sure. That's for damn. That's sure. for damn sure. Uh, keep it up out there. Keep uh, keep spinning up some great hash and. Keep killing it on the slopes. Oh, yeah. Thank you, guys. Thanks for coming uh, out. Yeah. Peace.